Hello, my name is Fabian Engemann. I'm a feed application engineer here at DSpace, and I welcome you to this innovation coffee break. Today, I want to talk about smart data logging and how DSpace can help to uh, optimize your data acquisition process. But I don't only want to talk about theory. I'm going to show you a real-world example, and I've set up this demo, which I'm going to show you later on. Let's consider this data acquisition process as you see it from a lot of customers, here in an oversimplified version. You're probably driving around with multiple vehicles all over the world, which are collecting data for eight hours a day. In this case, you're collecting all of the data. So they're all being stored on separate SSDs. Afterwards, you upload all this data to your cloud storage. But then, to actually work with the data, with the relevant data for you, you need to manually filter this data. Let us consider the cost of this process. So, of course, you have costs for storing the data in the SSDs, but as well in the cloud environment. But also, of course, you need a lot of effort to actually filter this data later on to get the useful amount of, of it. Let us try to estimate, as an example, the cost of storing data in your cloud environment. Let's say, for example, you have 10 vehicles which are driving around 8 hours per day and store 20 gigabits per second. In this case, you're collecting 720 terabytes per day. If you do this for one year, you end up with over 260 petabytes of data. You can already see that handling this amount of data will become a challenge. So if you consider the cost, let's say you're storing your data in, for example, Microsoft Azure, where it costs 81 cents per terabyte per month. So in this case, you end up with over $2.5 million of costs for your cloud storage per year. But what if 90 to 95% of this data is actually never used? So how can we optimize this process? Well, one way to do this would be to, if possibly, get rid of the manual filtering on this side and to shift the filtering into the vehicle. So if we use something like a smart logging algorithm inside the vehicle, the idea is to not collect all the data, but only the data which is interesting to you. So if we now consider the costs of this process, of course, we add some effort for this smart logging. But the cost for storing inside of the vehicle and in your cloud environment will be reduced. And also, this manual filtering will take less effort. So how can this smart logging be implemented? Let's consider this real-world example. Here, we have our high-end platform for data logging and prototyping, the Autera, inside of a vehicle, and it is collecting all the sensor data. But here, we also have a perception ECU. So the Altera works as a man in the middle and is forwarding all the sensor data with low latency. What we can do in this case is to establish a CAN communication to feedback the object list into the Altera. We can then implement a smart logging algorithm on the Altera to use the scene understanding from the perception ECU to then only trigger the recording in specific situations. So now I want to show you a demo of exactly this. But since we're DSpace, it's way easier for me to not drive around in the real world, but to drive around virtually using our sensor simulation software. Also, to substitute for the perception ECU, I'm using a Scalaxio lab box, which then feeds back the CAN object list into the Altera. So now let me show you how we can implement such a smart logging algorithm on the Altera. As you can see, instead of driving around in the real world, I'm driving around virtually using our automotive simulation models. And of course, our simulation knows the exact position of all the objects in the scene. This simulation right now is currently running on our DSpace Galaxio lab box. The lab box outputs the object list data using the scan communication. I've used the flexibility of our Altera data logger to add another CAN board for this. Also, normally I would be recording real camera data like these ones, but here I'm recording the 
uh, virtual camera data coming from our physical based sensor simulation, which is fed in via Ethernet. So on the Altera, we have implemented our smart logging algorithm, which is running in our middleware for multi-sensor applications, RTMAPS. So here you see the RTMAPS diagram. In here, I have one recorder component, which is recording the virtual camera image, which is this one. Also, this component is receiving a trigger so we can activate and deactivate the recording. This trigger is coming from our smart recording component, which is this one. Let's look under the hood. So in here, I have one component to access the CAN object list data. The second one is decoding this information so that we can access the exact object list information, for example, the type of object or the distance of it. Then I can use viewer components to get the real data insights in here. Also, to trigger this recording, I can use these condition blocks. So this condition is currently checking the object types, so it's checking whether the object is a type of a truck, and also if the distance of that truck is closer than 30 meters. So if there's a truck closer than 30 meters, I want to trigger the recording. And now we're going to jump into the demonstration. First of all, let me start the virtual test drive. Here you can see what's going on inside of the virtual scene. Then we have uh, this LED, which is indicating if the recording is enabled or not. Also, audio object this data coming through CAN is being displayed with this data viewers. Notice that we have just started the recording since this truck has, is closer than 30 meters in the scene. This can also be viewed inside of these um, data viewers. The triggering component in my ATMAPS diagram is checking through this object info, whether the data is valid, and also it's checking for the object type, which is coded in this number, and of course for the distance of the object. So what about the recorded data now? Let me shut this down first. I can now show you what we've actually recorded. So in this small diagram, I only have this player, which is uh, playing back the data which I've just recorded using the smart logging algorithm. Uh -huh. In this window, you can see the data we have just recorded the virtual camera data with which I've replaced the real cameras. You might have noticed that the first part of the simulation has been cut off since there's no truck close to us. So we only record the data which we are interested in. As you can see, now the image is standing still. Since again, there's no truck close to us right now, no new image data is coming in. Also, you can see, uh, see in a few seconds that once uh, that the new data will be coming in once the truck is close to us again. Please keep in mind that this process definitely needs to be adapted to your exact use case. For example, we can add a tablet so that the driver can manually trigger the recording and see data also in the vehicle. Another option would be to implement further algorithms on the high-end GPU on the Altera. But as you can see, I was able to utilize our easy-to-use and flexible tools to get a scene understanding inside of the data logger. We can then use the scene understanding to optimize the data logging process. If you have any further questions about the technology shown, please contact DSpace, your partner in simulation and validation.